What's going on, Badger Nation? Welcome to the PPC Den Podcast, where for over 200 episodes, we've been your home for all things Amazon PPC, tips, tricks, strategy, perspective to make your Amazon advertising a little bit easier and a little bit more profitable. Today, I had I just finished recording with Mina and I had a fantastic time. Uh, it was the first time I have had ever talked to him. We talked for 20 minutes before the show. Uh, I think we have a lot in common. Uh, I really enjoyed the way that... Uh, we talked about campaign auditing and I, I was curious on how he likes to approach new campaigns and some really interesting things, some thoughtful things uh, to the point where we took what can sometimes be a, maybe a basic topic. And I think I plucked out a couple of really interesting gems there, which push your Amazon advertising a little bit further. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, as always, you can get a link to uh, all of our episodes in the show description. Um, but we, what we also have is a Google Sheet with all of our episodes organized by topic, uh, by uh, sort of uh, experience level with Amazon marketing. We, we have an SEO section. Uh, we've got you know, product optimization section. Uh, we've got ROAS optimization sections. So check out that the Google Sheet as well, because uh, I think it'll really help scaffold your learning. And if you're ever curious, like, oh, I want to learn or I want to go a little bit deeper on this topic, uh, it'll be really helpful. But a uh, special thank you to Mina. He woke up at 7 a.m., which is always, uh, you know, it's uh, 9, 9 a.m. Austin time, 7 a.m. California time. So shout out to Mina for, thank you for being flexible and waking up early. Uh, have a good one, and I'll see you inside the Badger Den. I've launched campaigns and picked keywords. I've got my bits, set placements too. Now bad mistakes. I've made a few. I've had my share. Mina, thanks for coming on the show. I'm, I'm happy because we have talked to each other online here and there. We've been circling and we finally got you on the show. Welcome. Con congrats on having the kid. It was, oh, it was worth you. waiting, worth waiting, definitely worth waiting. I'm excited, man. I think today is going to be a, a really solid episode. So I'm very excited. Oh, yeah. I also, I'm a bit of an audio visual nerd. And I love your lighting and anyone who's watching on YouTube can see that it looks like Mina is in the, maybe the Burj Khalifa on the <laughs> 75th floor and the sun is setting to your left and uh, it looks, you, you have an amazing setup over there. That's exactly what's happening right now. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's the sun is rising. So that's the only, and, and I'm not in Dubai. That's the only two things you got wrong. Yes. Uh, and, and thank you so much for being flexible. I'm on a very strange schedule right now uh, with uh, a new baby. So you actually, this is your recording at 7 a.m., which is a, a crazy time. So I am uh, very thankful for your flexibility. My pleasure, man. I, I'm excited. You know, I've been I've been uh, watching you and Elizabeth for a while and I love your episodes and I love her, her stuff too. So um, I was like, man, we really got to get an episode together. We're doing it. Uh, I also want to ask you about uh, your MMA background. And you know what? It's funny. I feel like a lot of people who are digital marketers, especially technical digital marketers, have something that they do that almost scratches the same part of their brain that makes them good at doing technical marketing, which it not everyone resonates with, like downloading spreadsheets and sifting through stuff. So I often feel like for me, it was like real-time strategy, video games. Like I love playing like Starcraft and like 
where it's like you versus a competitor and like you're you're trying to figure out like how to use your resources better and like clicking all the buttons very fast as you can to like outsmart and outpace it someone. And for me, it, like that's the same part of my brain when I'm like looking at it, a campaign where it's like, how do I work on this faster? How do I do more stuff in less time? How do I like get the biggest bang for the effort? Uh, do you have the same kind of connection to MMA or is that as like a completely different part of your brain? I'm so fascinated. No, it's it's the same part of the brain. I don't know if, how much it relates to um, you know PPC, but it, but it does relate to business because it's like yeah. it's it's always like it's all the same uh, principles. It's almost like when I'm in business and all the things are going wrong, it's like the same coach is saying like it's on you, it's on you. You didn't put the reps in. Like stop, don't look outside. Like it's not, it's not. There's not the answer is not outside. It's within you. Like sort of thing. Yeah um like you know don't quit like keep going um and so it's like all of these things like right now like i mean you know uh, as we grow i'm sure you've experienced this like at certain stages there's like a lot of discomfort where what was working like you know a few months ago is not working now uh, and it, like that's where that kicks in it's like it, because it, it, like mma for me is just like a lot of discomfort all the time uh mm -hmm. like and just continuous improvement and so it's you know those kinds of uh, concepts are what carry on. It, it's mainly uh, with business. With, with um, my chemistry background is is really what helped me with with um, PPC, which was like we did so many experiments and like uh, we would sit down and we, we would have to like have the discipline to like test one thing at a time down to like the, the amount of time. Like you're going to put a chemical in another chemical and you're going to wait 15 seconds. Then you're going to wait 35 seconds. And that's like a, you, the temperature is going to be 28 degrees. Then it's going to be 48 degrees. And so it was so painful, but it teaches you to like have that discipline of like changing one thing at a time. I think that was one of the biggest things uh, that was like, you test all these different things. You change one thing at a time. You try to start making like patterns and um, you understand like what affects what. And, and I think that was also a big thing um, that helped with the PPC. Yeah. Totally resonate with the physical challenge of MMA. While I don't do MMA myself, like uh, I'm like an, I, I run a lot, and I think it's a perfect corollary. I was in a mastermind one time, and the question was, "What is one thing you do outside of business that helps you in business?" And almost everybody said, "Like exercise. It's like pushing yourself mentally makes you a little bit more fortified in the in the battle of business." And uh, that's very cool. You have a chemistry background. I went to college for biology. Oh, so I mean, very similar, right? Like, uh, you know, you know, the tests like where you couldn't change too many things and it was a controlled experiment. Yeah. Same thing. I mean, I mentioned the, during the intro that, uh, you are an Amazon seller yourself and you also started an Amazon ads agency. Do you guys do just ads or, or do you expand beyond it? over at Triv Trivium. Also, tell me how you came up with the name Trivium. So I was looking for a cool name um, that, that had some, some... That's why I asked. It is a cool... It is like... That, that has some relation with like the like uh, the Trinity, like, um, you know, like, uh, you know, so I, I can I can be religious and like protected. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I, like I found the word Trivium, which means the intersection of three roads. Mm. And I'm like, cool that's that that uh, relates to that but also it's like uh, something that you're passionate about something you can be the best in the world at and something you can add a lot of value uh mm -hmm. like i got that from the book good to great i think yeah the hedgehog concept yeah you, yeah exactly you choose it's something that you can be something that you uh, you're passionate about something that you can be because when you're passionate about it, you can you know you enjoy doing it then something you can be the best in the world at because that's like you know if you have the opportunity to be the best in the world then you're, you know, it's, it's worth pursuing. And then uh, something that adds value, uh, like that you can measure because that's how money works, right? It's an exchange of value. I make your PPC better. You make more money. I get money. Like that's how it works. So I kind of like, uh, was looking for something that had like, uh, like a three in it or like a, and so Trivium was the intersection of three roads. I'm curious. Uh, so this is, a, this is, so I picked, uh, ad badger. Uh, and I had a second, Ad Badger was actually my second choice. Uh, and actually, it might have been my third choice. I wanted uh, uh, Ad Rabbit because I was like, oh, rabbits are like quick and fast. And like, uh, that was taken. Uh, and then I wanted like Komodo ads, like the Komodo dragon, like very badass animal. 
uh, I got, I already got the domain, so I might use it in the future for some other thing, but yeah, I liked, I liked Komodo and then I was like, oh man, but, um, uh, it like spelt strangely. And then yeah. I was like, okay, Badger, Badger, you know, everyone knows that. Ad Badger is like that. also very clean. Like it's, it's simple. It's clean. Like, you, yeah. you know what they're, you know what these people do? They do ads. Like it's mm-hmm. not, you know, Trivium. So Trivium is also a band, which I like unfortunately learned later that it's like a band and i was talking to my seo oh guy he's like yeah like I-, I think we can get the number one position maybe in five or ten years like don't worry about it oh my and gosh I- i'm like what bro <laughs> but-, <sighs> but it's okay i mean you know it's- it doesn't impact the business at all but it- but it's like it's it's a band they have a wikipedia page and i'm like oh man <laughs> i should have learned dude. i'm sure there's a wikipedia expert somewhere that is like did you mean Trivium the band or the marketing <laughs> agency? Maybe. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited about the topic we're going to talk about today because we haven't done it in 2023. And I think it's revisiting uh, this topic, which is, I feel like for a lot of PPC professionals, I, I never like the word PPC experts, but a lot of PPC professionals, like people that do PPC professionally, at least for me, and I don't know about for you, but if I'm on the phone with someone and they're describing their problems, like, oh man, like my ads were better in the past. They had a lower A cost and now I just can't seem to, to get them where they were or like I'm having trouble scaling. I already know what the problem is before I even log in often. Like I sort of like know what to go look for. And I'm curious if like you have that same sort of like intuition and I wanted to sort of just see because, you know, this is really our first conversation. I would love to just like get that view like when you first talk to someone, maybe even before you look at their, their account. And then once you do get in there, like what your sort of like checklist is for digging around for like finding that those common problems, right? So like finding those common areas where people just sort of stumble and, you know, whether it's like the immediate cause for a problem, or maybe there's a problem with like organization and then other issues have pop up later down the road. I would love to sort of like do that because it's such a cool topic. Yeah. So uh, when, when someone says that, um, like I first want to take a macro view and then, and then a micro view, like the micro is what we're going to talk about in a second, like the portfolios, campaigns, number of ad groups, number of keywords, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Like uh, how many search terms are, are spending money, not making sales. That's micro. But first, I'm like, uh, I I have this uh, sheet, this template. My, I don't know if you've seen my analytics template, but if someone fills it out, I can tell. And I developed this because as I started managing more brands, I'm like, guys, I need something where I can just like really quickly like diagnose the 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 problem. And so, what I need to see is like your ad spend, your sessions, um, your total, se- your your cost per session, uh, which is like your ad spend divided by sessions. Your total sales, and this is trending, like every day. Like if you're like, oh, my, you know, my my PPC used to be so much better. I'm like, okay, cool. Like just do one week, one week, one week, one week, and and give me these numbers, like your ad spend, your sessions, uh, your cost per session, your total sales, your click through rate, your conversion rate, and then um, you know we can put the profit too. Uh, that would be nice to see. So yeah, then I, then I like I I start looking at the trends. Um, you're telling me your PPC is bad. Right. So uh, like the cost per acquisition, which is what makes the PPC good or bad, um, is a function of your your conversion rate and your uh, cost per session. So what I mean by that is like if you're trying to say, like, what what is my cost of acquisition for a product? Um, You're spending one hundred dollars on ads. You're getting one hundred sessions. So you're spending one dollar per session or one dollar per person to come into the listing. If your conversion rate is 10 percent, it means you need 10 sessions to make one conversion. 10 sessions to make a conversion times $1 per session, $10 to make a conversion. If you have a, whatever, like $10 in profit per unit, you're breaking even. So to drop that cost for acquisition, so it goes from bad PPC or, you know, from bad PPC to good PPC, it would be you either increase that uh, conversion rate to go from 10 to 20%. And then that means that your cost, uh, your cost of acquisition goes to, you know, $5 or your your cost per session goes from a dollar to fifty cents, which means again you're gonna go. Your cost per acquisition goes to five dollars because you have the cost of the traffic. So you either double the conversion rate or half the cost of the traffic. And so, when I have those metrics, I start looking. I'm like, what happened to the the ad spend in relation to the sessions? 
If, if your ad spend is flat and your sessions are going down, you are losing organic rank, right? But it, that makes sense because you're spending the same amount of money. Uh, oh, the, the, uh, yeah, you're spending the same amount of money. If your click-through rate is going down too, that's also a, a signal that maybe, it, you know, you used to be like the, the nice one and then everyone around you became nicer and then you, you started becoming the uglier one. <laughs> you know, your price became worse. Yeah. Uh, everyone's main images started becoming better. Uh, your reviews start stagnating. You went from a four and a half to a four star, something like that, right? So I'm looking at the trend of, of uh, ad spend. So if my PPC spend is going up and my sessions are going up, I look at my cost per session. Is my cost per session stable? If that, if my cost per session is going up, it means that I'm, I might be, have been overspending for ads. If my PPC spend is the same and my cost per session is going up, again, that means that like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, um, I, I'm not as attractive. Uh, my click through rate is going down. Something is going on. If my uh, PPC spend is going down and my cost uh, per session is the same, that then then I, again, like I'm overspending because it, for the same amount of of uh, like I'm I'm spending less money and I'm spend I'm getting I'm having to spend more per session. So I start mm-hmm. looking at the relationship of like the spend and the traffic. Uh, you know, like what's going on there. So that's like my first macro thing. Um, and then the second thing is I look at what's happening to my conversion rate and then you know if my ad spend is the same and my conversion rate is going down okay that's why your your ppc is is uh going if my ad spend the same my cost per session is the same my conversion rate is going down okay there you go uh you know if, if my ad spend is going up my conversion rate is going down okay maybe you started targeting you know things that are not as as uh well converting uh if my ad spend is going down and my conversion rate is going down uh, again, that means like something's happening to your product. It's becoming less attractive. Maybe you went from a four and a half star to a four star. Something happened. So that's on a micro scale, uh, on a macro scale. So very quickly, I can look at that and diagnose the problem. So so I either know it's like a, a traffic issue or, you know, it's it's if it's a click-through rate issue, it's either your main image, your price, or your reviews, you know, 99.9% of the time. Uh, and if it's a conversion rate issue, then... Okay, let's diagnose what happened. You know, uh, why all of a sudden your conversion rate is going down? Is it uh, everyone around you has changed, or is it that you you went from a four and a half star to a four star? Is your price no longer competitive in the market? Was it a trend? You know, did you have like a trendy product and that trend is fading? Is it seasonality? Um, you, you go look at the search history for the keywords. Go look at the BSRs of everyone. Is everyone trending down? If the answer is yes, then it could be nothing's wrong with you. You just have to weather this period, be profitable as much as you can, and then and then it, it's going to improve. So that's on a macro scale. That's how I kind of figure out, okay, what's going on? Like, uh, And then it's it's also important because a lot of people come to me and they're like, my, my PPC uh, isn't as good. And then I realize that they ran out of stock at some point. Or they were like super low stock and it said like in stock May 13th, some, something like that. And that th- then you're like, okay, that has a huge impact. You start looking at their cost per session used to be 18 cents. Now it's 36 cents for the same ad spend, meaning that they lost a lot of organic rank. Or, or the, the, you know, it, it, they weren't getting the same effect that they were getting from their, from their organic placements. So that's how I figure out like where the issue is. And then we go into like, okay, let's, let's dissect your, your camera. I'll, I'll pause for a second to, to hear your thoughts. Yeah. I, so just reflecting back, I think it's really valuable that people don't jump the gun. And what I mean by jump the gun is they go straight into their campaigns and they begin to like blow it up because they think that, you know, there's, I can't tell you how many times people misdiagnose, uh, the issue, uh, and I can't tell you, here's, here's an unpopular PPC opinion. I think most people working on their PPC campaigns, even professional PPCers, like professional marketers, not just store owners, I think people working on PPC campaigns are way more emotional about it than they would say they are. Meaning, what I mean by that is like people go into their campaigns and it's, it's like, oh, I feel like this. I feel like this. Let me go like do this. Let me go do that. Almost like if you were to sometimes force some PPC or like write out the almost robotic process to get to the, the issue, 
they'd be like, no, like you need to like go over and like, sometimes I'll do this and sometimes I'll do that. And it's like, well, actually, no, you don't need to do that. Like just start at the macro view, start with all these numbers, then use that as your indicator, your jumping off point to go in further. So just to, so I think it's great, right? Cause it helps direct you where you need to go. And the other thing I'll say too, is like, I can't tell you how many times too, I'll talk to people that are like, my PVC is worse now than it was later. And it might be quarter, they're comparing quarter one to quarter four. And it's like, well, or they're, you know, comparing, you know, 2020 yeah. peak conversion times versus 2021 uh, or, or like 2023 where things are like different. And, the, the, you know, they're, maybe they're missing context or they're looking at too short a time frame or too long a time frame or this, or they're not taking into account different levels of competition. So before we go like any further, just talking about this macro view, because, you know, maybe people are going to build their own macro reviews or like in your analytics template. Uh, did you share it on LinkedIn? Because if so, like we'll find yeah, it. We'll, yeah. And, and uh, we'll, I have we'll put in the show notes. Yeah. I'll, I'll send it to you. You can put it in the cool. show notes. It's, it's a Google. Yeah. Show. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. So, well. uh, uh, before, before you get into it, I'm curious, like how you thought about how long you should go back in time. Do you do it daily? Do you have like 180 individual days? Do you have like 12 weeks, three months? Like tell me about your time frame and like what you found personally most valuable. Like how does your brain work when it comes to picking a time frame and picking a time interval? Yeah. So I, like, honestly, the, the one thing I'll, I'll tell everyone, like, stop living in the past. Like, it does not <laughs> matter what you did in the past. Like, stop thinking that you can, you like, you knowing that something happened, like, does not mean anything. It doesn't, like, you're like, oh, but, you know, we have, you, we used to have 15, 20% the echoes, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, so what? You know, it's like, um, like, how does that help? You know, it just, it's, it just makes you in your heart emotionally really long for that. Anyone who's a savvy investor will tell you that past performance is no indication of future performance. It's like, well, you know, it went up to 50% last month. It's like, was it going to do that again? Uh, yeah. Things like that. Yeah, a hundred percent. And so, so most of the time it's just, um, I'm trying to figure out what I can do right now. So when I do look at like um, historic performance, you know, we, we have everything from the second that the, that we start working, like 30 days or, or so before we start working with a brand. Uh, and then we have all of that historic data. And a lot of times I'm scrolling and I'm like, you know, all of that stuff in, you know, in, in the past, like it's done. I can't, I can't like, yeah, it went up and it went down. So sometimes I look at trends and, I, and, and I'm like, how did the product react? So as we scaled, how did the product react? As we optimized, how did it react? And, and you know, then I notice, I'm trying to notice, like, is there any red flags? Like when we scaled immediately, like conversion rate tanked. And it was like, maybe it's a product that works very well with, with, with niche keywords. But the second that you try and go broad, it, you know, it doesn't work anymore. And so I'm, I'm looking for that stuff. But um, usually I, I just look at the last like 14 days. I'm like, what happened in the last 14 days? If spend is flat, uh, you know, and, and everything is flat or whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. We have one of two directions. We're either going to optimize for profit. So go in, look for any opportunities, like keywords that are spending money with no sales, et cetera, et cetera. You know, add them as negatives, things like that. Or because the profit isn't that good, let, then we only have one direction to go, which is scale. So let's, you know, 1.5 X our daily ad spend, but launching new campaigns, spending more money on keywords that are currently working, increasing budgets for campaigns, things like that, increasing bid by placement and spend more money, get more sessions, and then see if the revenue reacts the way we want it to. Because if you spend more money, suppose you're supposed to have more revenue if your click through rate conversion rate holds up. Um, so more, more, more spend, more sessions, more revenue. Uh, not all of it's going to be profitable, but then once you're at that higher revenue, you're hoping that also you're going to get some organic rank benefit. And then when you, when you keep the things that worked, remove the things that didn't work, you end up with, you know, more profit net Yeah. Uh, because you discovered like you launched 50 keywords, 25 of them were profitable, 25 were bad. So when you cut those 25, you'll, you're going to be left with 25 more profitable keywords, which means you're going to have more profit. And so mm -hmm. that's what I'm looking for. I'm just looking in the last 14 days, you know, what happened and what can I do now? Because like at the end of the day, it, like we can decipher the past, but the, the question remains, what can I do now? 
And it's always one of two things like, do I need to clean up and, and try and go for more profit? Or do I need to scale because it doesn't seem like we can squeeze any more profit out of this? If you're spending like $70 a day, like what are you going to do? Save $15? That's going to be your profit. Like who cares? You want to go from 70 a day to like 250 a day. And then hopefully 150 of, of that of those dollars is now profitable. So when you clean up the 100 that wasn't, you're left with 150 you know, dollars of profitable spend a day. And, and mm -hmm. um, like that's, I always look at it like, what can I do now? And, and mm -hmm. the number one thing I'm always like um, cautious of is, is this actually not a PPC problem? Because, because the last thing that you want is this is a click through rate problem, conversion rate problem, and you're just forcing PPC, trying, trying to make it work. And, and uh, it's not because like it, it's a funnel. It's like you get, you get views, you get impressions. A certain number of those impressions click on you. That's how you get the sessions, and that's the click-through rate. And then a certain number of those people that come into the listing sessions will convert. That's the conversion rate. If those the click-through rate conversion rate metrics are broken, no matter what you do, like have like a you know ten cent auto campaign hack, all of this stuff, nothing's gonna do anything. Like it, you, those those metrics are broken. If those metrics are fine okay, cool. Like, you know, it's time to work on the PPC. And also if you improve those metrics, all of your PPC improves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, growth on Amazon is like a decathlon. It's close to a decathlon rather than a marathon. It's, it's like not just running. It's like, well, actually you need to be like, you need to be fit. You need to like be able to have a really high jump. You need to like do, be able to swim all these different things. And I think like, yeah, that, that, that you want to talk about the most common problem I hear it's like everyone thinking that PPC is the only thing to do. Uh, and it's like, well, actually, you know, actually I also started noticing, I started yeah. noticing if you have less than 30 days of stock uh, uh, of a product, it starts performing worse. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you know, like we only noticed it because we, we have like uh, on my real profit, there's like this trend line of like your inventory and then your sales. And we started seeing the second that we hit, 30, it, like you start seeing the sales go down. And I would tell the team, I'm like, did you guys optimize this week? They're like, no, we, we kept mm -hmm. everything the same. I'm like, yeah. weird. Why is sales going down? And then, and then I started looking at all the, the different uh, scenarios and I'm like, everyone who timed their inventory too tight so that they were getting it like, you know, when they only had 15 days of stock from day 30 to day 15, you know, or like the 30 days of stock to 15 days of stock, it's all downward. And, and I'm like, there's another thing, you know, that that's like completely unrelated to PPC or your conversion rate that will affect, you know, your performance. So it's it's all of the things. Yeah. So I think for this sort of first section, whenever we approach, it's like take the macro view and try to find out what path to go on. And I'm curious to because there's so many different paths. There might be stock issues. There might be a, a review issue, competitive uh, issue. If you were a betting man and like the next campaign, the next account you look at, what would you guess it is? Like, what do you think the most common was it? Common one is today. Um, common the, problem. The most common problem. I would say probably uh, uh, like too many keywords in in campaigns. Yeah, I think I think that's that's uh, like the number one thing that I see is we go we we look at campaigns and it's just like keywords are stuffed like mm -hmm. tens dozens of keywords stuffed in campaigns, and and I think that it, it it gives Amazon too much room to do to do the random stuff that Amazon does. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I mean, I, I obviously like we're not going to talk about. Con I don't I don't think like conversion rate is drastically changing or, you know, or click through it is drastically changing. But I think the most common thing that I see is just like the campaigns aren't structured well enough. Like the ad, multiple ad groups, uh, low, low budgets, uh, like $25, $30 budgets thinking like you're on Facebook when it's, it's, you know, behaves completely differently on Amazon, but I can walk you through the, the audit if you want. Sure. Let, so let's, let's do that. So you, you take your macro view and does your macro view is the macro view dictate what you do next or is it more so like mental note? They probably have this going on. Yeah. So, okay. Macro view. We look at the macro view. Conversion rate is fine. Click through rate is fine. Um, 
you know, I, I look at my cost per acquisition. It's a, it's a normal cost per acquisition. Like I have a $15 profit per unit. It's a $7 cost per acquisition. No problem. We can probably shave off a little bit, you know, uh, when we look at that. So my next step is, okay, uh, I'm going to do one of two things. Like I said, I'm either going to scale the revenue or I'm going to optimize uh, for profit. So, uh, you know, if, if you feel like you've already optimized, then, you know, scale for revenue. So you can, you know, identify that next hundred dollars of profitable spend a day if you feel like no you know like there there it looks like it's there is inefficiencies looks like the cost per per session went up over time as the ppc spend went up okay let's optimize first so those are the two things that i'm looking for then when i go into the audit um uh step one is like what what are the the like um housekeeping you know kind of like too many ad groups too many keywords per campaign low budgets sort of thing Right. And then the second thing is like, as I go through everything, what's my goal? Is it to scale? If it's to scale, there's a certain set of things I'm doing. If it's to optimize for profit, there's a certain set of things that I'm doing. Um, and I can walk through that. So we, we look at first thing is like, you know, organization. Let's look at portfolios. Um, are you separating one portfolio per parent ASIN? Um, I don't separate child ASINs because uh, what, what we realized is you have all these different child ASINs. Uh, that you're running ads on, they they all send traffic to the same listing and different listings get the, the credit. So to avoid that, we just pull it. Now, if you want to have certain campaigns for certain child ASINs, go for it. As long as when you evaluate the performance, you evaluate it at, at the parent ASIN level. So that's why we do the different parent ASINs for each different portfolio. We don't break out like a portfolio for auto and whatever. Uh, that's where uh, the second step comes in which is campaign naming. Uh, we have like really strict campaign naming so you can easily sort, like when you type in the search like auto, it will show up only the auto campaigns. Um, the way that I name the campaigns is the, a product code. So a code for any random code you want, like that's easier than the ASIN. The type of um, campaign, is it a close match, loose match, complement substitutes, broad phrase, ex exact product targeting, expanded ASIN, category targeting, whatever it is. Um, the uh, the purpose of the campaign, if it's a ranking campaign or something like that, and, and a source of keywords or any other unique identifier you feel like is necessary. Then I go look at the budgets. Any campaign that has like low budget, right off the bat, I know that it, that's probably what's hurting performance. Now, if I'm in the scaling phase, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, okay, show me any campaign with like, let's say like a 4x row as or more, uh, you know, 25% equals or less. Let's increase the budget you know, get it to 100, 150, 200, if, if I'm scaling. If I'm not scaling, I'll, I'll hold off. Uh, you know, I, I can, that that could be another tool because when you're optimizing for profit, you, you really do want to just reduce the ad spend uh, while keeping everything the same. Then I, I click into the campaigns. Uh, we go into the campaigns. I'm like, um, show, like, do we have multiple ad groups? Campaigns that have multiple ad groups, that's where I see issues where uh, the ads the ad spend is, is being split into like different uh, ad groups unevenly. An ad, an ad group that has better keywords is getting less spent. The unfortunate thing is you don't want to pause something that's working. So we can't pause anything that's working. But if there's anything that's not working, like you know, you, you can sort by spend in the last 30 days, sort by sales. If it hasn't generated any sales uh, or, or spend, pause it. it you know, it's it's pointless. So at least clean up those those keywords. If, if and then later on, like if you see a keyword that's profitable but getting three sales a month, and the search volume it's like a 10k a month search volume, you know it has potential to do more. You can later on like gamble by pausing that keyword and, and putting it in its own campaign. Um, then I look at the number of keywords. Uh, again, I'll sort by by sales uh, in the last 30 days. Anything that's you know no sales, that's an easy pause. It's an opportunity now to take those keywords and launch them. If I'm optimizing, uh, you know, I'm just pausing. If I'm, uh, you know, scaling, then I'll pause and then take the those keywords uh, and, and you know, give them another opportunity in, in like more campaigns. But probably I'll go first for like ones that are search terms that are profitable first. Then I clean up and now we have, uh, you know, good campaign structure. Um, next, I, I go look at the placements. If we're scaling... Uh, then any any uh, campaign that I noticed had good performance, uh, you know, for like, let's say top of search or product detail pages, I'll increase the bid by placement. If I'm optimizing for profit, I'm looking for the inverse of that. So any campaign that has a bid by placement, but the, the ROAS is not great uh, in that placement, I'm going to, you know, bring the percentage down to zero. So you're not, you know, spending more to show up for a 
uh, placement that you're not doing that well. on. So now we cleaned up the campaigns. My next step is, is um, if I'm scaling, uh, then I'm like, okay, let's identify profitable search terms that I can launch in their own campaigns. I'll go download the search term report, identify, uh, let's say in the last 30 days, any keywords uh, or search terms that are unique. Uh, and let's say pr- for me, profitable between one to 25% ACOS. Uh, you can do one sale. You can do a minimum of two sales. It depends on how you know, the more conservative you are, you, 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 you know, add more parameters. Like I wanted to have at least two sales and between one to 15 or one to 20% ACOS. If you want to be less conservative, more aggressive, um, you can start with, with being more conservative. And then you're like, I wanted to increase my daily ad spend by $50, but I only was able to get $15. So you can then loosen up the, the criteria, launching those campaigns, a single, you know, one campaign, one ad group, up to five keywords and and grouped by a cert, you know a similar search volume and I'll take the same cost per click that I found in that search term and and, and launch it there. Uh, if I'm optimizing for profit, then I'm in the cert, in the search term report. I'm identifying all the search terms that spent over a certain dollar amount. Let's say you know ten dollars. If I have a thirty dollar product, probably I can tolerate the fifteen dollars and no sales. Fifteen dollars no sales or ACOS is over a hundred percent. Uh, take those keywords, add them all as negatives to to stop spending on those keywords. Um, then finally, it's like okay, let's let's um, start doing some optimizations. So the, you know, bulk sheet. Uh, look at all the keywords and and uh, and uh, product targets I'm currently targeting. If I'm scaling, uh, you know, then I'm identifying anything that was profitable, increasing the bids. So anything, let's say between one to thirty percent ACOS, increase the bids by five cents to get more visibility on something that I know is already working. Um, or if it has very low impressions, increase the bids by like 15, 20 cents to, to give it, you know, maybe maybe it's just a low search volume keyword, or maybe it just, the bids the bid is too low and it didn't have a chance to show up high enough. If I'm optimizing for profit, anything that has a high ACOS, I'm gonna lower the bids. So let's say, you know, again, you could be more conservative or less conservative, you can start at, hundred percent or more ACOS or, and then you can, you're like, oh, I only was able to shave off $10. I want to shave off more. You can go to like anything above 70% ACOS. Um, and then anything that's spending money, not making sales, lower the bids there. Uh, and then the final, the, the fi- there's a few things that I also look at that, you know, that are outside of that, which is, um, so one thing to keep in mind is if you have a, a sponsored video, a headline search ad, uh, and a sponsored product you know, regular ad, the same person could click on the multiple ads and charge you money. And it's the same session. It's only going to be maximum one conversion. So in cases like this, I like to, uh, if I'm optimizing for profit, I'll go look at my sponsored video and my headline search. um, And I'll, and where I have high sponsored rank, I will attempt to say, okay. And again, this is one thing at a time. So, you know, I'm trying to, to, you know, maybe add negatives only. And then, you know, three, four days later, lower the bids three, four days later, identify all the sponsored video that also have a high sponsored rank and then lower the bids there. Maybe take it from a page one to a page two and then see that drop in ad spend. Did it result in a drop in revenue? If it did, I'll bring the revenue back. uh, I'll bring the spend and the bids back up for the video. If it didn't, if I just dropped my ad spend and the revenue stayed the same, then I wasn't really generating additional sales from having that video. Same with headline search ad. And then finally, I do the exact same thing um, with organic rank when I'm trying to optimize. So do I have a high organic rank and high sponsored rank? If the answer is yes, let's test lowering the bids, getting a lower sponsored rank and, and maintaining the organic rank and see what happens. Sometimes we can drop the, the spend and maintain revenue. Sometimes revenue drops, bring it back up. Sometimes, you know, you drop the spend revenue stays the same, but a week later, the revenue drops when the, when the uh, organic rank drops, Again, you know, th- then you know what happened, then you can bring it back up. Um, and then obviously when I'm trying to scale, it's like the vice versa. Where do I have, you know, low organic rank? Let's, you know, bring the sponsored rank uh, higher artificially for a while to get more conversions to rank higher organically. And I make sure that I'm tracking the organic rank and I'm actually getting a benefit. Usually I wouldn't do this for more than like three keywords at a time. So I can actually uh, know that it's working or not working. But that's my audit process. And that's like, you know, going through a, a brand new campaign, a brand new campaign manager, and like going through step by step based on either my, you know, scaling or optimizing uh, goal and what I would do in each scenario. I'm going to ask you some rapid fire follow-up questions, if that's cool. all right. Yes, let's do it. 
portfolio structure. You group by product. Is that right? Yeah. One parent is in per portfolio. Got it. Uh, what do you think of people that do, uh, I don't do it, but some people do. I'm curious if you have any feedback for them. Uh, I see some people do portfolios almost by like goal. Like they'll put all their ranking campaigns in certain thing. They'll branded campaigns in a certain, they're non-branded in a certain portfolio. Um, I'm curious why you choose the the way that you do, because I also do it by product, but I'm just curious to get the conversation going. What would you say to someone that's like grouping their portfolios by goal or something like that? I think it's unnecessary because you can have the goal in the campaign name and then you can just go into that portfolio. When you click on the portfolio, you want to see how your entire product is doing you know, at a glance. Like my Hydrolyte Unflavored, is, is, this is how it's doing you know, just at a glance. And then if I want to know like how the ranking campaigns are doing, I'll just type in ranking in the search and then it will show me all how my ranking campaigns are doing, you know? Mm -hmm. So th it's really not necessary to, to break that you, you'll end up having so many different portfolios. It becomes like pretty messy, pretty quickly. Yeah. Amen. So yeah, I, I'm on the same page with you. Uh, talked about campaign naming many a times on this show, for sure. You mentioned budget issues, you know, finding good ROAS campaigns with a low budget or limited by budget. Um, do you use Amazon's budget tab where they try to tell you like how, how often you're in budget, out of budget? Yeah, I mean, we look at it, but honestly, I, I don't trust Amazon stuff that much. You know, you know, mm -hmm. like um, I just trust like if I make a change in the budget, what actually happens? That's the only thing that because I've we've been like lied to by Amazon so much. You, you see one thing in the data and then you realize it's a different thing. Uh, you notice like a, a keyword is super high ACOS. You lower the bids. You notice you lost 30% of your revenue uh, and you're like, what the hell happened? I thought this was, you know, it wasn't converting that well. So it's like, because of that, I only trust the things that I can control, which is like, I can control the budget and I can, I can see the outcome in the total revenue. So, I mean, the, the budget tabs is good to, to look at because if Amazon says, oh, spend more, then you can definitely spend more. If it doesn't, it's it doesn't mean that I'm not. I'm also going to increase the budget. I like to be at a, like the floor is $100 a day. And then, you know, if I see good ROAS, scale it to 5000 a day, whatever, so that Amazon can spend as much as long as we're, you know, the, the ROAS is good. Yeah, two two comments there. There there are a lot of ghosts in the machine for Amazon advertising. Uh, it just Amazon in general. You, you know, you mentioned another one where like stock issues somehow impact visibility and like. Uh, so absolutely, couldn't couldn't agree more. I've, uh, the other thing too, with uh, what you said about budgeting. And like the opportunity to spend more every once in a while I'll hear from someone. It's like, oh, they typoed their budget. So they meant to write a hundred, they wrote a thousand or like they typoed a bid and their bid was like much higher than they thought it was. And like, what happens is like, they get the traffic. Uh, like a lot of times the traffic is just out there. Um, so I, I, always, I always think that's interesting. You also mentioned placements. I'm curious if you could comment on like placements, you know, top of search product page, rest of search. Um, in terms of, I, I guess an interesting question. I always, I always love to ask this, you know, walk me through the last time you changed, if you can remember the last time you changed a top of search placement, whether you increased it to a certain amount or decreased it to a certain amount, uh, what indicators were you looking for just with the top of search? Cause so many people focus on top of search, but I feel like a lot of times people are sort of making arbitrary movements like, okay, top of search, that's a hundred, that, 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 that enter. And like, I want to give people maybe a little bit of your, of a framework to make a little bit more informed decision. Uh, how do you like to cross that gap? Like if you can recall the last time you did that, what you noticed and what you did because of that. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll go and look at a campaign and I'll look at the, you know, placements tab and then, uh, or obviously I do it in the bulk sheets, but then I'm like, okay, let me compare top of search with rest of search. If top of search has a better CTR, better ROAS, you know, uh, than the rest of search, then it makes sense that if I show up more in the top of the search, I'm going to get more people coming in at a better return. And as a result, I'm like, okay, cool. If my bid is a dollar, I, you know, I want to increase, you know, by something like 30% every time that I check this, I'll increase by 30%. So let's say I, I check it like once a week. That's like 30% a week, as long as I keep seeing that the performance 
um, of like the the top of search is still better. It's still better CTR. It's still better ROAS than the rest of the search. So I'm willing to spend 30% more to show up there because I know I'm going to have a better click through rate and, and uh, return on investment. Mm -hmm. You know what I like about what, what you just described? And you mentioned it a couple of times too. You mentioned it in the, uh, if you rank high organically and you rank high through paid, uh, you'll take certain actions. I like how, and maybe this is a connection to the MMA perspective. You seem to like pushing things, finding the point of diminishing returns. Like where is the maximum I can hit it? And then where does it drop off to the point where it's not worth it anymore? Because uh, you mentioned it when you were talking about ranking high organically and paid. Uh, you mentioned it just here. Like I'm going to push top of search, check your performance, check a, a week again, push top of search, check performance. And I'm going to push it until I hit that switch point at which I'm like, oh, I'm going to back off of this. I'm curious if that was like a, a conscious decision because uh, I'm always so fascinated. I talked to so many PPCers uh, internally here, externally, like conversations like this. Uh, and I always am so fascinated by how different people's brains approach similar situations. So other situations that I've asked that similar question, like how do you optimize top of search? People have answered in many different correct ways. And I, you know, I think, that what you just described is actually really fascinating uh, and probably works super well. Uh, and other people have given other answers that are also fascinating and are also probably work very well for them. And I think like, is that a conscious decision you made? Like, I like that, like push it until you can't push it anymore, find that switch point and then, you know, take it, take it back down. And then you found your, your, your zone of Opt optimal, the optimal zone. Yeah. Uh, so th this actually came from engineering. Um, when you can't find an equation, uh, have you ever tried like iteration on, on Excel? But when, when, uh, when something does not have an equation, you use iteration. And, mm -hmm. and uh, what I started realizing is on Amazon, not, you, you can't come up with an equation. So double your bid does not mean double your spend. Uh, so, so since we don't have like a linear equation or even anything remote to an equation, and a lot of it stems from its human behavior on the other side. So, you know, it could be that, you know, when you increase your bid, it's just your luck that it's 60% more women are, are, are uh, clicking now, uh, you know, just this week, something like that. So because it's so completely random, you cannot find an equation. And the solution when you can't find an equation is to iterate. And so iteration basically means you change and you measure, you change, you measure, you change, you measure. And, and so it would look something like this. Like if, if I'm trying to aim like a, something at a, at a bullseye and so I'll, ch I'll turn a knob and I'll see, did it get closer? Yes or no. If the answer is yes, turn it more. Did it cl get closer? Yes or no. You know, let's say we have four knobs. Yeah turn it? Did it get closer? Yes or no? And you just keep turning these things. And if the answer is no, you turn it back. If the answer is yes, you turn it more. And, mm -hmm. and you do it small, 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 many, many, many times. And eventually you're like, okay, what equation did I follow? There was no equation. It was iteration. It was uh, make a change, measure, make a change, measure, make a change, measure. And, and because I can't come up with an equation for Amazon, I don't think it's possible. And, and because nothing works linearly or anything like that, then I'm like, okay, we're going to take an iteration approach. I am off the charts resonating because so, you know, at Badger software, it, it like optimizes like almost 2 million bids a day using like our algorithm. And what I think is so fascinating, we've been working on the thing for years, the algorithm. And we started in 2017 and we were making like all these like really thoughtful iterations. And there were still some areas where it was like, what the hell do we do with a keyword in a campaign that matches these scenarios? It's like, you know, what steps could we give it to get to maybe where we'd want it to get to? And we had a mathematician come in and he's like, there are times where you cannot do that, where literally you just guess at what it could be. And then you guess again. And there's actually a mathematical concept behind that. It's called the multi-armed bandit, uh, where basically like literally any guess is as good as the next one. You just need to pick. So for example, one thing we were doing was like brand new campaign, no data, start the bids really low and then push them up a little bit, push them up a little bit. And it's like, where is this, where is the point at which it starts to begin to make sense? And in terms of like 
time to get to a good answer and like time to get to a good performance, you could have done that, you know, little tiny steps, or you could have just picked a number, started from there and then picked up maybe a randomly different one. Uh, and then you would have gotten there faster with a higher degree of confidence. Um, so yeah, so what you just described is like, it's a thing I've learned in the last year or so that like multi-armed bandit where like there it's some things you, there is no equation and like some things you do have to guess. And I think this is like, this is like Amazon marketing at uh, advanced level. Cause it's like, it took me a long time to realize that where it's like, Oh, like we want to, we want order so much. We want to like define everything so perfectly. Like what is the perfect equation for top of search? And like, you know what? Sometimes the answer is like, no equation. Is it good to do more, do more of it? Yeah, exactly. Like sometimes they guess it's like guess and reflect and iterate. Like that is, that is the, the true thing. Like there is no perfection. There is yeah. no like ultimate it, equation. It's like, it drives it. me nuts when I see the the equations on Facebook in the Facebook groups. It's like one minus echoes divided by echoes, this, that. And I'm like, I mean, dude, you, it, it's, so, it's not possible to come up with an equation. Because because there's there is a massive variable that that is, you can't control with or two of them Amazon's algorithm and um, like the the shoppers both of those are completely random. If you get a bunch of shoppers that were between fifty and sixty years old versus twenty five to thirty years old, the behavior is different. Have you ever seen the the bell curve meme where it's like IQ bell curve and then like really low IQ on one side, really high IQ on the other side? And in the middle where most people are, uh, and then there's like three people on it and like in the middle where most people are, they're like crying. And basically what it is, it's like when you first get started, you don't know what to do. Then you try to like figure it all out. You're like, oh, I have everything figured out. You follow all these rules and they're in the middle and they're like crying in pain. And then like this super high IQ person is doing something similar to, to the, like the, the low IQ person. And it's the same thing. In this case, it's like, what is the perfect bid? It's like, I don't know, just guess. That's what the big person at the beginning is doing. And that's like what you get to when you're like super advanced. And like everyone in the middle is like trying to guess. You know, I, I talk about, you know, what a bid could could and should be on this show a bit. I do think there's some room for people to like understand a little bit more that like, yes, you want it to be influenced by performance. And like, yeah, yeah you know, for some people, a, an equation is probably going to be better than like nothing at all. Yeah. Right. Like there's, there, there, there's an area in your professional trajectory where people are probably, they're not randomly guessing, they're guessing poorly in the yeah. beginning. And you're uh, like, you know yeah. What? yeah, like this is, this is like a good starting point, you know, like yeah. this makes sense. Like th don't put $5, you know, or don't put 25 cents and, and, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. use this, this helps. Yeah, totally. I agree. Yeah. What I thought would start and be a fairly, uh, straightforward episode. We talked about some really deep topics in, I'm really happy that we had a chance to connect. You know, these, th these are some things that I haven't necessarily talked about on the show before. Um, and you know, I don't know if you've ever talked about the, the power of this sort of like randomness and jumping on that, uh, and finding that point of diminishing returns, uh, before on a show, uh, no, I, I think I think not. I think not a lot of people talk about it, and I, and I think I haven't touched enough. Where it's like, yeah. don't worry. Like the answer, like it's there. You're not doing the wrong thing. You you know, it's the no. I don't have like the secret answer. You know, the experts or the the professionals. There, there's no secret answer. It's like yeah. Sometimes it's comforting to know like your guess is as good as mine. Like we're exactly. in this together. <laughs> you like shrug your shoulders and like have a good guess and like, go do that. And like, I think the thing too, the number, this is, this comes from the uh, days where I did Google ads, this company WordStream, they had some tool where you can like opt in and get a free analysis. And like Google ads is like, even still, uh, like the amount of, cause everyone can do like Google search ads, like your local pr plumber can do it, but you cannot, they can't be on Amazon. Anyway, at one point in time, WordStream had like tens of thousands of accounts worth of data. And when they did this little analysis, they asked people to like assess their performance, like what's their target and where they're currently at. And what they found was that the accounts that were close to their target had one thing in common, which was they were very active. Like if you looked at the amount of changes per day, it was much higher per amount of ad spend than people whose accounts were way worse. So basically what they came to the conclusion was, and I swear by this to this day, was that if you are more active in your account, if you 
just literally log in and look at it and be like, I think this, let me change this. I think that, let me change that. You will be better off uh, because you'll catch things and you'll tweak and you'll react and you'll, you know, it's like you're sailing a ship from, you know, I, I don't know, Europe to America. And it's like, you're, you're checking your trajectory every single day. You're able to get to where you need to get to, or if you're flying a plane, you know, you're able to get to where you get to, as opposed to if you just do it like once a month, it's like, that's too much time for you to like, look, tweak, take action, tiny action, repeat it over time. So that's a big philosophy of mine, like slow and steady, repeated action more frequently is way better than like setting it up on the first of the month and not checking it till like the 20th of the month for sure. Definitely. And, 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 uh, track everything, like note down everything. So, you know, like I changed this, this happened. Yeah. Okay. I changed that this mm -hmm. happened and you, and every single, uh, product is, is unique. Um, so like what, 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 like that, like, so we run like so many products and it's every, everyone has its, it's like its own life, its own history. It's, it's like an own, ch uh, like a child, you know, like they have their own like personality and everything. And you're just taking notes. You're like, okay, cool. Like when we did this, this happened, when we did that, this happened. And, and, um, it's like, it's own, it has its own life. I'm going to leave it at that, Mina. Uh, Mina, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure. Uh, I really enjoyed this conversation and I hope uh, the people out there in Badger Nation did too. Um, we have a link to your LinkedIn. LinkedIn's popular for Amazon, Amazon marketing. Uh, we have a link to Trivium in the description. Um, thank you so much. My pleasure. If you, if you have any questions, hit me up, guys. Happy to help.